Here we go. In my last video, I showed you how you can use Fabric AI as a command line tool. I used it on my Linux laptop to create fantastic AI documentation from YouTube videos. Now command line in general gives you a lot more flexibility, believe it or not, compared with using um, GUI based computing applications. So I'm a big fan of using command line tools, which is why I've gravitated towards using Linux, whether it's my ThinkPad or my Raspberry Pi, or even using command line tools on my Mac mini. What I'm gonna show you today is how we can get that same capability on our mobile devices. I've got this working on my iPad, a third generation 2020 11 inch iPad Pro and an iPhone because sometimes you're out and about and there are things that you can't quite do on the apps that are made available to you from the app store. Now you can see my iPad screen next to me. Now what I'm going to show you today is I've got a YouTube video of a video I made a few days ago. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the link to that video and what I want to do is I want to connect to my Raspberry Pi downstairs and I want to use the fabric tool to grab the transcription and then send it to AI and get the summary back. So let's show you how we can set this up. Now this works exactly the same on my iPhone as it does on my iPad. It's just a bit easier for me to capture the screen. And also there are some things you can do on an iPad like use your keyboard and have the bigger screen. But to be honest, it mostly I use this on my iPhone. Now the app I'm using is a free app. There is a paid for version as well called Termius. You can download it from the app store. I have tried other tools as well, such as Blink and there are other free and paid for tools as well. But I've settled on Termius because it's fairly easy for me to use and it gives me what I need. Now I'm just going to open this up and I'm going to create a new host. In other words, I'm going to provide connection information so that I can make a remote connection to my Raspberry Pi downstairs. SSH is a, I think it's a protocol and it works on any device that has it set up. So let's make a new host and then we have to provide our connection information. So the first thing is we have to provide a label. I'm just going to call this Pi and we can provide a host name or a local IP address. Now, um, you should know or you can know the IP address of all the devices on your local area network. I can safely provide this without making myself insecure because I'm only connecting to this over my local area network. I have got this set up to connect anywhere around the world, but as long as I know my IP address, and as long as I know the port that I'm using, and as long as I've set up port forwarding on my router to allow connections to SSH from anywhere that has that knows my IP address. I'm not gonna do that today. There are plenty of videos that show you how you can do port forwarding and set up SSH remotely. I just wanna show you that this is really, really convenient for me to make a remote connection. Hello, this is a note from my future self, just to let you know that there are internal and external IP addresses. I have my phone set up to SSH into my Linux devices, my Raspberry Pi and my Mac, and I have to know my external IP address to connect remotely, and I have to set up port forwarding on my router as well as some other configurations to be able to have remote connections to my devices that are at home when I'm anywhere on the internet. Whereas in the diagram you can see a, while I'm at home, I, as long as I know my host name or my internal IP address, I can connect anywhere within my local area network. So you can SSH internally using internal IP addresses or from anywhere in the world externally using the external IP address no security risk sharing my internal IP addresses. External IP address is a different story and if people know it, they can hack you. Now I'm going to put in the host name. I called my Raspberry Pi Pi 5 
but I could just as easily put in an IP address of in my house. So it'd be in the format of like 192.168.1. Whatever number the node is in my house. But I'm just going to put in the host name. So you can put in a host name or the IP address. It's Pi5. And then I need to provide some um, credentials. So I, first of all, I need to tell it what port I'm connecting to. My default address is, sorry, my default port is 22 that's what is used for ssh connections by default but because i've got a number of different devices and i want some of them to connect outside my house uh, my raspberry pi is actually set up to be on port 2222 but by default that will be 22 oh, i'll give you my username sorry i need to put my username in here that was already connected before we need to put in a username and a password I've already entered that before because I, I set this up before. So I'm just going to connect to that. But the first time round, you type in your username, you type in your password, and that will be remembered for future sessions. But I'm just going to use those credentials that were there before. Now you can add or you can generate keys, which is a mixture of a private and a public key, which is beyond the scope of what I'm going to show you in this uh, little video. But there are some really, really good resources such as Learn Linux TV, and basically you send your public key to the device you want to connect to and you keep the private key on your own device and it's only the combination of your public and private key um, being known together they connect together will allow you into the target device securely there are some really good resources that show you how to do this but I'm just going to use a username and password for today I'm going to save those credentials and then I'm going to log in. First time you log in, it will ask you to set up a fingerprint. I click on continue. I won't have to do this again. Oh, it didn't have my password. Let's just type that in. It should remember that. I think it's because I started typing it in before. No matter. It, you, but you can save your password. But I'm going to type it in this time. So I've connected and now I am connecting to the command line on my Raspberry Pi downstairs. And I can do everything that I would do as if I was sitting in front of it with a keyboard and a, a monitor. So in fact, my Raspberry Pi downstairs is what we call headless. It's not actually connected to a screen directly and it's not connected to a keyboard directly. So that's the only way that I can interact with my Raspberry Pi. Um, I am going to send a command now. So if you remember, I did say that I had copied the web address of a YouTube video that I made a few days ago. So I'm going to send that now. I'm going to use the fabric-y command and put that YouTube uh, web address in there. And then I'm going to pipe that through to the second part of the fabric command, which I did talk about in the last video. Fabric and then I'm going to put SP. This time I'm going to put summarize. It takes a moment. What it what it's doing is the fabric dash Y will grab the transcription of that video. Then that text will be packaged up or piped through and then sent to OpenAI with the prompt or pattern to generate a summary. And that's come back. Now the final thing I'm going to show you is this can interact with the clipboard on my on my iPad. And it works the same on my iPhone. I can go in. I can select the text on my iPad screen with, with touch. If I had a mouse, that would have worked as well. And I can go to my Apple Notes or whatever note taking app I wish to choose. And I can just paste. Let's just go in and just paste that text. And that's come through. And I can do whatever I want. On, with that text on my iPad. So that's a really, really useful workflow where we can connect to a local computer that can do things that we can't do on our mobile device. Through SSH, we can do whatever command line uh, activities we need on that connected device. And then we can copy and paste that back into our mobile device. What I'm gonna show you in my next video next week and in the next few days is how we can automate this using Siri shortcuts. So in other words, 
rather than me having to go in and open up an application and set up a secure an SSH t uh, session, what we can do instead is we can use a Siri shortcut to do the connection for us. We can send our text from our mobile device to our target device, get it to do what it needs to do, and then we get the results back. In this case, it will be a note appearing in my Obsidian Vault. I hope you found this useful. If you like what you've seen, please comment, please like, please subscribe, and I will see you in a few days with more weird and wonderful stories about how we can use quirk flows or, or various automations with text and our various computing devices. Enjoy your evening, uh, take care and see you soon.